Welcome to Insights into Insurance with Tom Sorensen of Americana Insurance Group. All information provided is educational in nature and not intended to be acted upon without first consulting the appropriately licensed professional. We're out here at the Freeborn County Fair for this week's episode of Insights into Insurance. And we are standing here with Tina Stripe today on Insights into Insurance. And Tom and I are having a pretty fun time because we're going around asking people insurance questions to see oh, how smart they are when it comes to insurance. Tom, what's the question we have for Ms. Tina Stripe? Oh, Tina Stripe. So now this is part of the Insights into Insurance uh, radio show. So who is considered an insured on a homeowner's policy? I would say the owner of the home. Anyone else? Well, if you have a loan, then the bank would also be on there, correct? They would be considered a mortgage, mortgagee, okay. uh, loss payee on it, okay. yes. But also, a named insured is a spouse, relative, anyone under 21 in your care or care of your residents of the household who is a relative, a student enrolled in full-time in college who is a resident previous to going to school and under 24, anyone under 21 in your care of care of a resident of a household student enrolled full-time in college and previously lived in the household. So that kind of hits home for you because yes. you got two kids that are going to be in college. <laughs> a little bit, yes. So, no kidding. Okay, well, that, I, didn't, I didn't even think of that. Yes. Okay, good to know. See, yeah, because they're going off to college, so See, now, now I know they're covered. Now you can go get your insurance license. Yeah. <laughs> yeah <no. laughs> I'll pass. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Tina. And Tina, for playing, you oh, get a swag get? bag from Americana Insurance. Oh, I'm yes. so excited. Yes. Oh. It's gloves. Ooh. It's flashlights, pens. And a, well, I shouldn't probably tell you this, but a, a complimentary green pass at Oakview Golf that's Course. That's all right. That's all right. So Woo! maybe you might need to get a little change of scenery from Wedgwood to Oakview, maybe. So. Oh, my. This is pretty fun. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, Tina. Sorry I didn't pass with an A, but. Oh, you, you I would say a B. 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 I was going to say okay. B plus. All B right. minus. B? Okay. Right in there. Good. Sounds so, good. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Why don't you see who, who we're talking to? It's David. Klug. Dave and Sherry Klug. Sherry Klug. Yeah. And they were former clients of mine when they ran Hickory Hills Campground, and now they are living where? In Blooming Prairie. Oh, you're living in Blooming Prairie. Last time I heard was Florida. In Arizona. For or me. Arizona, yes, yes. Yeah. So, what I'm doing is I'm going around and asking insurance questions. Okay. Okay, because for our radio show that we do. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll see. <laughs> What is an umbrella policy? It covers just about like all aspects of your business maybe or your yourself, your health and your car and your home and everything like that. I tell you what, Dave did pretty good on that. It provides excess liability limits above the underlying liability policies. So like when you're saying above your business or above your car or above your personal insurance. Right. Uh, if the underlying coverage is used up by the payments of the claims, the umbrella drops down and picks up where the underlying policy leaves off. It also provides protection against some claims not covered by underlying policies, normally purchased in million-dollar increments. Right. You did a really good job, Dave. Cool. Paul, I got Mr. Fio Garcia and Rachel Wangen with me. They are, well, they're together. Okay, so so we're gonna let them try to answer these questions together. How's right. that sound? All right. Okay. Uh, according to KPMG, which is an auditing firm, big auditing firm, what will be the decline of the auto insurance industry due to automated vehicles by 2050? Is it A, 71 percent? Is it B, 30 percent? Or C, 90 percent? I think I think B. B? You're going to go with B? You don't always have to follow them. <laughs> it was A. 71% oh, will be the, the decline in 30. auto insurance. Now, the next question, okay? You still got one question to redeem yourself. How about reductions in accidents and in claims by 2050 because of the automated drive yourself vehicle? Will it be A? 80%, B, 10%, or C, 90%? I think 80. Yeah, 80. 80? 
Yep. You guys need to quit okay. agreeing on everything. Is it's, it, it was 90%. Oh. But thanks for participating. I appreciate it. Next year we'll get it. Get that. There you go. <laughs> We're here with Lana Howe from Freeburn County's Partners in Prevention. And Lana, you're on Insights into Insurance. It's our Saturday show all about insurance, but with Americana Insurance is Tom Sorensen. Tom's going to ask you a question about insurance. And no matter how you do, you're going to get a prize, all right? All right. Hello there, Ms. Howe. Hi. How are you doing today? Doing very well. Well, this is kind of goes with insurance, but it also kind of goes with law enforcement. Uh, can you get a DUI by using your own prescription drugs while driving? Uh, yes, you can. You are correct. Yes, you can. And it's a, a growing situation and the issues that are coming out about that. So thank you. Yeah. We are talking to Amy Geyer. She's the truancy officer for the school district. And Tom, I'm not too sure, but I think she's going to ace this question about insurance. She just might. There are five breeds of dogs, Amy, that show up on every homeowner's insurance company's prohibited list. Can you name three out of the five? Prohibited dogs. Prohibited dogs. Pit bulls. Yep, that's one. German shepherds. Good guess. No. Good guess. Um, Rottweilers. Um, the Great Dane. No. No. <laughs> the five. So you got pit bull and Rottweiler. The other three that show up on every homeowner's insurance company's prohibited list is Doberman. Oh, okay. That's where I was coming up with the Doberman gang. Remember? Did, did you ever remember that movie way back? I was. It was like in the 70s. I see, I see a lot. Uh, and the Chow Chow and the Prisa Canaros. I don't even know if I'm saying that right, but that those are the five dogs. German Shepherd that you said is on a lot of the prohibited dog list. So you know what? You've already... I've already given you your yeah, gift bag, and so you won already. So great job, Amy. Thanks for being a great sport. We'll be back with more of this week's Insights into Insurance with Americana Insurance's Tom Sorensen in just 30 seconds. Take us out to your ball game. Take us out to the crowd. We sell insurance for most anything. Who'd have guessed that the 18 could sing for its root? Root, root for good coverage. Americana's more than a name. 4X3, 7, 7, 2000 for the insurance A-Team. You'll be singing too when you see what the A-Team and Americana Insurance can do for you. Let's take it from the top again. I think the rest of you are out of tune. <laughs> We're with Don Fleek. Don, uh, I am going to ask you an insurance question as part of our radio show, Insights into Insurance, and I am going to answer or ask you the question now. Name one out of the three different types of form coverages on a property insurance. Just one out of the three. Can you name one? Injury. No. But that's a great guess. That's a great guess. The answer is basic, broad, and special forms. So like on your homeowner's insurance, you either have basic, broad, or special form insurance. Can you tell me which one's the best? Special. Bing, ding, 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 ding. She is correct. Thank you, Don. All right. Our next contestant here on Insights into Insurance here at the Freeborn County Fair is a mountain of a man, Bart Bourbon from the Albert Lee Fire and Rescue. Bart, we're going to ask you an insurance question, and on the line is Nine Holes at Oakview. Do you think you can handle the pressure? I'm going to try. I'm a little nervous, though. I, I don't know what's in store. I hope he gets it right because I don't want to mess with him. <laughs> so, uh, all right, Bart. What is the difference between Minsure and Obamacare? For health insurance. Well, Minsure is run by the state. Obamacare is the federal government regulations on health care um, that the states are required to do. But Minsure is the Minnesota form. You know, I tell you what, he did pretty good on that I, uh, question. It's it's basically the same thing, but you answered it in a way that he was right. <laughs> so, so good job, Bart. Perfect. All right. There you go. Awesome. Thank you. Well, I'm with uh, Brian Navy. Brian? Hi, Tom. Um, I, how you doing, Brian? Pretty good. Well, I got a question for you about insurance. I don't know anything about insurance. Oh, I bet you do. In 2016, dog attacks account for what amount of homeowners insurance claims per year in the U.S.? I'd say probably a third of them. 
Third is correct. In 2016, what was the average dog attack claim paid out by insurance company? So each claim, uh, what was the average on dog attack? Within two grand. There you go. 30,000. Wow, 32,000. See, you know something about insurance. Okay, this is Brian Burhow with North Star Power Sports. Hello, Brian. How's it going? Well, good. We are around asking people here at the Fair, Freeborn County Fair uh, insurance questions. And by the way, we've asked, what, how many? 15 questions and everybody's got them right so far. So yeah. pressure oh, on, Brian. Yeah. <laughs> not make 16 a mistake. 16. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. But what is Bailey coverage? Bailey? Yep, what is Bailey's coverage? Sounds like a liquor to me. <laughs> <laughs> well, it... you know what? Maybe you could have some coverage on your liquor. Actually, it comes with your business. Well, I was the first one to get that wrong then, or what? And you're probably know more of it as like a garage keeper's coverage. Oh. Yeah. Do I have an easier question? So, co Bailey's coverage is coverage on property left in the care of the insured for storage repair or servicing example auto service repair which is called gar garage keepers coverage oh. so you know it as garage keepers coverage well, see i'd have known that yeah right exactly <laughs> that's why i didn't ask you that <laughs> so, thanks brian all right no problem we're with troy anderson troy is a farmer out here in freeborn county and we're at the freeborn county fair and we're doing insights into insurance and i've got a crop insurance question for you Okay. What is the sales closing date on crop insurance? When do you have to have your your uh, answers to the, your insurance agent by? Is it the end of February? <laughs> no, no, March 15th. March 15th. Yes. Uh, well. Okay, now you just did it. How about your acreage reporting due date? July 1st. July 15th. Uh, well, see, well, ours goes to what used to be Agstar. They always yeah. wanted it the 1st of July, so yep. so they can get it turned in, I guess. That's yep. the correct so, answer. So. All right. July 15th is the answer, but thank you for playing. So I'm with Michelle Nelson here, and uh, she's with Pet Authority. There are five breeds of dogs that show up on every homeowner's insurance company's prohibited list. Can you name three of the five? I would say a Doberman. Yep. A Rottweiler. Yep. A German Shepherd. Oh, that's a no? good, good guess, but it's not on every homeowner's. Okay. So I got two. You got two. So do I get another chance? You get another chance. Pitbull. There yeah. you go. There but we go. Those are the nicest dogs. Most yeah, of them. I know. Most I of know, them are. I yeah. know. They're very nice, but statistically, they show that they're yes. the ones that have the most claims. What are, what are the other two? Uh, Chow Chow. Really? And you know what? Oh, yeah. Chow never... Chows have a, their personality, yes. Yep. And and uh, like you said, German Shepherd, they are on a lot of the yep. homeowners list, but not on every single homeowners. <laughs> and then the last one, you can maybe tell me how you're supposed to say this, but it's Presa Canarios. A what? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, uh, I take it it's quite an oh, exotic dog. Yeah, I don't think I, we have any of those around here. Yeah, so I think I we're do. okay. Yeah, so. It must be a big dog. Yeah, yeah. So by the way, do you know how many homeowners claims are from dogs, the percentage wise? Uh, I would say it'd probably be quite high. It is. It is probably maybe 20%. It's actually 33%, okay. one third. And then guess what, how much, maybe you can guess how many dollars per claim in the average is a dog attack claim? Uh, I suppose we're probably 5,000. 32,000. Holy cow. Yep, so. Wow. <laughs> good information, huh? Thank you yes. so much. I am with Patty and Bob Yaw. From Alden, Minnesota, correct? Right yeah. in Metropolis, yes. Right in the Metropolis, yes. And they are going to try to answer uh, insights into insurance question about life insurance. Ooh, yeah. And Patty's all of a sudden going, oh, yeah, let's get this one. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I, I can see it in their eyes. Bob, see ya. Give me two reasons. I have five listed out, but give me two reasons why people would buy life insurance. To protect these two right here, the wife and the grandbabies. Absolutely. And another reason? Yes. To cover expenses incurred by a death. Exactly. So my answers that I wrote down 
our final expense coverage, coverage debt, take care of your family in case of death, pay estate taxes, and a business transition. Exactly. Okay. So you you got it right. So guess what? You get a handshake. You get a bat, a handshake, ah, there you go. <laughs> and and a bag full of uh, gloves, nine holes of green fees at Oakview Golf Course for free. Do you golf? Look at that. I'm a duffer. Yeah, yeah, you we duffer. We don't golf very well, but we we That's have. Perfect. And you come uh, out to my house. Flashlight. And... There's a flashlight in there. Oh, looky here. Yeah, you did very good. Well, thank, thank you. Thank you. you bet. All right, Tom, so we were out at the fair today, and we've asked a bunch of different people various insurance questions. God, we had fun. Well, and that was the thing. We got to go out, and it's all about meeting people at the fair and new people and reunited with people you haven't seen in a while. No, that, I, you're right. There was people out here that I have not probably seen in years and uh, got to see them. It's, that's what Freeborn County Fair is all about, isn't it? It is, and it, it's... And that's what I really appreciate about the fair. But when it comes to asking these insurance questions, Tom, were you, were you surprised at all by the answers you got from John Q. Public? I was absolutely impressed by the answers that we got. I, I really, truly thought that almost, I would say, 90 to 100 percent of them would be uh, ones that they wouldn't probably be able to answer. And they answered them. Uh, they might not have had hundred percent of the accuracy but it was they did a really great job and I was really impressed it must be that our insurance uh, insights show that we do today well and that's the thing I was surprised actually well I'm surprised but not surprised how many people actually said you know oh yeah when we, when we explain what you're doing yeah I listen to that yeah it's and and uh, I hear it when I uh, everything when I'm on the streets or go to church. Uh, it's like, oh, hey, I heard your show. A guy, uh, actually, I think I maybe have told you this before. He drives to Rochester every Saturday morning. He says, uh, yep, I hear your show every Saturday morning. And I'm like, well, thank you. So it's it's really uh, fun to get that information out because it really is a dry subject, but we try to make it so that it's not dry. We try to educate people, and people are amazed at the things that are involved with the insurance and uh, you know Tom we'll be back kind of on our normal type of routine next week but it was good to go out and experience the fair and I know it's a little early but I'm gonna kind of do my best raccoon and see if I can't find a half-eaten corn dog around here because I'm starving I want that too <laughs> I, I'll eat the other half and then the and then maybe four more <laughs> <laughs> uh, Tom we'll be back next week with more insights into insurance sounds great Paul thanks You've been listening to Insights into Insurance from Americana Insurance Group. All information provided is intended to be educational in nature. Before acting upon any information obtained during the Insights into Insurance radio show broadcast, consult an appropriately licensed professional.